Michael, let's bring in Robert Thompson, director of the Byler Center for Television and Popular Culture at Syracuse U University, and Stephen Battaglio. He's television writer at the LA Times. Thanks for being here. Um, Professor Thompson, let me start with you. You saw those numbers. I expect they're going to keep going in the direction that they're going, right? They are. I mean, those numbers were 0%, not there very much uh, uh, long ago, and they're going very, very high. And as someone who uh, uh, is a professor who spends a lot of time with people between 18 to 24, uh, my students have not had a television set in their residences for a long time. So, uh, uh, yes, I think this is going to continue to be the way more and more people get their television, even though the television itself doesn't look that much different. Full disclosure, you were a contestant professor, right? Yeah. <laughs> back in the day. Do you remember me? I was the loudmouth sitting way back in the back. No, anyway. When oh, that was you. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only one. When we're talking about, I mean, here we are. We're working in television. We're invested in people keep consuming the kind of media that we're handing out there. Uh, when you're talking about the cost factor, are cable companies and, and traditional media providers pricing themselves out of business? I mean, I pay 170 dollars a month for my uh, cable and my internet service compared to what 10 bucks on Netflix yeah, well, it is true that right now, if you uh, get rid of your cable, you're likely going to spend uh, less money. But how long is that going to last? Uh, my Netflix bill has gone up. My uh, Amazon Prime bill has gone up. And slowly but surely, I'm having to put together what's starting to look an awful lot like an old uh, cable bundle. Like a bundle, you want, right. right. Exactly. If you want The Handmaid's Tale, you got to get Hulu. If you want the new Star Trek, you got to get CBS All Access. If you want uh, the, the three new series, Series that have started since we began this conversation on Netflix, you got to get Netflix. Uh, uh, and pretty soon, uh, putting those all together with the prices that will go up, because unlike Newtonian gravity, this stuff goes up and, and doesn't go down. It, we may be up to the cable and, uh, bill and, before long. And Stephen, right now, I have to pay somebody, don't I, to get a cable, a wire, a broadband service into my home. Now, eventually, it may come in all in over the air through 5G, but I'm still going to be paying somebody for that. You are. If you subscribe to uh, YouTube TV or Hulu Live, which offers a lot of these networks as, uh, as if they were cable channels, uh, those companies are paying uh, the networks to carry their feed, and they are passing that charge on to you. And they are beginning to look a lot more like cable. So the, the cable company is not dead, she asked very self-interestedly, right? <laughs> and, and also, you do need a cable subscription to watch a lot of programs. You can't get CNN streaming. You Live can't sports. get MSNBC what? streaming. But, you, need, you need cable. But, but CBS offered a digital streaming news service, and uh, Les Moonves made a big point about it you know, six months, a year after it's launched to say, we've seen exponential growth month over month. Sure they have, and, and, it, and it's, it's, it's doing okay, from, probably from an operational standpoint, it, it may be breaking even, but it is not a threat to CNN or when, MSNBC When are we gonna start seeing point? those offerings on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, you, mean, like news? you know, um, news, current events, things that right now you don't wanna watch <clears throat> on DVR. When they can find out a way to make money with it. Uh, right now, the oh, okay. benefit of Netflix and these why, other services why couldn't Amazon, is that they have libraries. Uh, professor, why couldn't Amazon come up with their own nightly newscast? They could. Uh, Amazon, Amazon could. They could. Amazon they could may come up with a 24-hour day newscast if they uh, uh, if they wanted to. Um, the problem is, I mean, there, there's a lot of different business models shuffling around here, but the transition is clearly all moving in the direction of people getting this stuff over the model of uh, uh, online, although it is true that many people get their online uh, stuff from their, their cable provider gives mm -hmm. them their internet mm -hmm. connection. Let's shift from how people to wa watch to what they watch. Roseanne made a really triumphant return to television network on Tuesday night blowing ratings estimates out of the water with 18.4 million viewers for the revival's premiere. That's 10% more viewers than the series finale 21 years ago. Is this a wake-up call for Hollywood and the networks in terms of what they, what they put on television, Stephen? Uh, I don't think so. Why not? Because I think that people loved Roseanne for a long time. In fact, after it went off the air, it was on cable and syndication for years. Generations of people learned to uh, uh, the characters and embraced the show. This is, not, and you know, we're talking about all of these choices that are available on streaming 
400 programs, what the hell do I watch? Roseanne, I know that. I like that, and they tuned in. And by the way, we but saw this. We saw the streaming. Do you see it as a, a Middle numbers. America show versus a bi-coastal it Seinfeld was, show? Al, it was always a Middle America show. Uh, a lot of people are making a big deal that uh, that the, the high ratings look a lot like the uh, electoral map in 2016. Yes, exactly. But that's how the show always looked. It always did well. I, in, you know, so in, I guess in, my point America. is, does Hollywood want to start thinking more about Middle America? Well, because they, they can. But you know, the thing is, you're watching the Connors. I mean, uh, the the Connor family. You know, we have four percent unemployment. And these people still can't find jobs. I mean, it's not a it's not a really a, a, a great environment for advertisers. I think the reason why you always have young urban people uh, in uh, on the coast is because it's aspirational. It's young. Got it. The they most have famous money, television and, aver and advertisers want to reach. The most famous television character of my lifetime, of my growing up, was Archie Bunker, right? Sort of the well, there's been a lot of middle class, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. working class. It goes back to the life of Riley, the Jackie honeymooners. Jackie Green, Gleason. Uh, the Flintstones, for heaven's sakes, was a working class thing. But I have to say, Roseanne in the 1990s, uh, Sanford and Son, uh, uh, married with children even beat uh, Roseanne. But uh, Roseanne did that. Uh, in a way that I think was a lot deeper and more sophisticated than almost any other television mm. had done before. And I think now is a perfect time. We're rebooting everything uh, these days, but I can think of no better time for a reboot of a show like Roseanne and just let Roseanne do exactly what it did for nine seasons back in the late 80s and 90s. Uh, and I think that will be a very timely thing for them to, uh, uh, to do. It is nothing new. It was what they did back then. And what they did back then, I think, is very meaningful today. I, I think what people liked about the show is not just the fact that it was Roseanne of the working class, but the dynamic that really reflected what's going on today in America. People are talking about politics. They're disagreeing about politics, arguing about it, very much the way they did on All in the Family with Archie Bunker. Sure. They didn't watch Archie Bunker because they liked a bigot. They liked to see him fighting against a changing world and the things yeah. around him. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Good Absolute. insight. Thanks, guys. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.